Hey, how's it going? Today we got another question from the community. Is there some sort of macro control and assignment tool in Reaper, just like in Ableton Live? The lack of this option is something that really makes me stick to live. Well, we don't want that, do we? Cool. So another great question. And the answer is kind of sort of yes. So for those who don't know, let's quickly hop over to Ableton and see what macro control is all about. If you already know, of course, feel free to skip to the next chapter. I have also covered in the past how to just route Ableton to Reaper so you get the best of both worlds that way. So I'll also put the link to that in the description below. Okay, so in Ableton, when you have a collection of instruments and effects on a track, you can assign some of their parameters to macro controls. So right here, I have a synth feeding into a couple of effects. And all the way to the left, we can see the macro controls that are linked to some of the parameters of these plugins. So for example, I have the filter cutoff and resonance here, and they control the filter of the synthesizer. And then I have this other feedback control, which as you can see is controlling the feedback of two effects, the phaser and the echo. So this is awesome for a couple of reasons. Firstly, once the macros are assigned, I can just minimize the effects and just control what I need to control from here. So instead of opening this giant synth interface just to adjust the filter, I can just do it from the side. And then in the case of the feedback control, I'm not only saving space, but I'm also linking two parameters to control with a single knob. And these knobs, like any other, I can, you know, assign to my MIDI controller, I can automate them, and I can save all of this and recall any time. So let's switch to Reaper and see how much of this we can recreate. Now in Reaper, if you want to link parameters, the native way is to, you know, give a parameter a wiggle, then click above the plugin on the param box and select parameter modulation slash link, which opens this window. And from here, we can link this parameter to any other parameter on this track, for example, our high shelf frequency. I'm blasting through all of this because we already have another question about this. So we're gonna do an in-depth tutorial of this window next up. But overall, the native system gives us some of the controls we get from Ableton macros, but not all of them. So for now, let's not use this system because there is a better way and that is using this custom script by the amazing MPL called MPL underscore mapping panel background. And if we open it, we'll see this window right here. And when you open this the first time, you'll see this note, mapping panel master.jsfx not found. So with this script, you also get a master JSFX that needs to be in your project for the script to function. And you can load them the old fashioned way through the effects browser, or you can just create a track, drag it to the top. And with that track selected, all I gotta do is click here. It says add mapping panel to the selected track. I say yes, it'll put the script there. And now we can see that this window now shows us 16 knobs here we can use just like Ableton's macros. So let's go through two practical examples today and hopefully that'll give you all you need to know to use the script. First off, let's just make a simple tilt EQ. So Reaper stock EQ doesn't have this band type by default, but it's basically a low shelf and a high shelf that are linked with their gain knobs reverse linked. So we can easily make our own using the mapping panel. To start, I'm gonna click on the first knob here to select it. And to add any parameters from any plugin to the panel is really easy. Just give any parameter on any track a wiggle, then come up here and click the plus icon on the top right. And as you can see, that parameter is added under this knob. Also, the first time you add a parameter from any track, it'll automatically add this other JSFX on that track. But this is just a blank JSFX, so don't worry about it. You don't need to touch it. Just forget about it. Moving on, I'm gonna switch to band two, give its frequency slider a little wiggle click the plus icon, shabloinks. Now both these parameters are under the first knob and they are linked to each other. So as I move the knob, we can see the frequency slider on both bands are moving together. So now we can use this knob to control the center frequency of our tilt EQ. Let's click on the next knob and this time give the gain slider a little wiggle, click the plus icon and repeat for the second band as well. Wiggle it, click the plus icon. So again, these two are linked now, but they are boosting and cutting together, which is not what we want. We want to reverse link them. So as one goes down, the other one goes up and vice versa. So as I move the knob, you can see this green kind of plus sign moving up and down these two curves, but we can adjust the curves themselves to get the same knob to send different values to each parameter. At either end of the curve, you can see these green square little handles and if I left click and drag on any of them, I can adjust the shape and angle of the curve. So I'll go to the second parameter, drag this square to move it all the way up. And I'll go to the other end, move that one all the way down. And now the gains are reverse length as you can see. 
And actually, I wanted the knob to work in the opposite way. So I'll just revert that change and reverse the curve on the low shelf gain instead. So now with our knob at 50%, we can just see a flat EQ curve. If I move it clockwise, the highs are boosted while the lows are attenuated. And if I go counterclockwise past the midway mark, I'll be cutting the highs and boosting the lows. So far so good. And finally, let's click on the third knob and link the bandwidth or Q of our two bands as well. So you know the drill, wiggle, wiggle, click the plus icon, wiggle, wiggle, click the plus icon. And now we got ourselves an honest to God tilt EQ. The third knob adjusts the Q, second knob is the gain, and the first knob is the frequency, yay. So just for a quick demo, I got a drum loop on this track and let's take our tilt EQ for a wee spin. So as you can see, really useful stuff. And now if we want to save this whole shebang, I can just save this as an effects chain. Then a new project can just load them and you're off to the races. You just need to load the master JSFX in the new project, or you can even copy the master JSFX onto the same track and save that as an effects chain. And that works too. So that's a brief overview of how the mapping panel works. Let's look at one more example and explore some of the more kind of in-depth features. For this one, I'll select this track where I have Serum as a VSTI, and that is feeding into an isotope dynamic delay and a realm reverb from native instruments. And so normally if I want to control all of these three plugins together, I can of course select them all, right click and float them, but they take up a lot of space on my screen. So instead, once I've done most of the sound design, if there are only a few of these parameters I'm interested in adjusting in real time, I can assign them to the mapping panel, and then just control everything through that, just like in Ableton. One big difference here is in Ableton, you can have one set of macros per track, but with the MPL mapping panel, you get one set of 16 knobs per project. So that's a bit of a limitation, but 16 knobs is still a plenty if you ask me. Anywho, in Serum, I got my sound how I like it, but I kind of want to control the sub oscillators level. So you know the drill, wiggle, wiggle, zoinks, Notice that since it's a new track, it gets the JS effects on it. Don't even, don't even give it a second thought. So once again, these are linked. And here, I don't want this parameter to go above a certain amount because that would be too much sub. And if we look at this curve up here, the X axis from left to right is the macro knob amount going from zero to 100%. And that is linked to the Y axis, which is the parameter assigned to the knob going from zero to 100. And we can completely scale this. Go to this corner and drag the handle down. And now if I move it, the parameter moves more slowly and doesn't go all the way to its maximum. I can drag on the other handle and also prevent the knob from going all the way down. So I always have a little bit of sub. And now with this knob, I'm not even linking it to any other parameter, but the mapping panel gives me finer control over the range of the frequency I do want to control. And I can also now close my serum window and get my screen space back. With this next knob, I want to control all three feedback parameters across these two plugins. So wiggle, wiggle, click, click, zoinks. And I wiggled the wrong knob. <laughs> but speaking of that, when you add the wrong thing, just click on this X right here to get rid of it. And sing it with me this time, wiggle, wiggle, zoinks, wiggle, wiggle, zoinks, and wiggle, wiggle, zoinks. So now these three are linked, and this time I do want a different type of behavior. So I want the feedback for the delays not to go all the way to 100%, because, well, obviously, but with the round reverb, the feedback never really clips. Once you get to 100%, it just kind of acts more like a freeze reverb. So that can actually go to 100%. So this time I'm gonna grab this handle here and we can drag it down like last time, but we can also drag it to the left and we'll end up with this little gray area at the end. So basically past that point, the knob no longer affects the value of that parameter. It just maxes out. So if I do something like this with these three, as I move the knob from 0%, they start going in unison together. Once we get here, one of them stops little bit further. Now the second one stops and the third one just goes all the way. What a time to be alive. There are also a couple of hotkeys that come with this script. If you hold command as you click and drag on the handles, that's for like more fine adjustment. And if you hold option and alt, as you click and drag up and down on the curve itself, 
You can adjust the curvature of the ramp. Setting these to different values also allows for tons of cool transitions and kind of swells and stuff when you're using filters, etc. And this M right here just temporarily disables that parameter from receiving this knob's values. And then you can just re-enable it whenever you want. If you right click on any of the knobs, there are some extra options there. These are just like any other knobs in Reaper. So you can add a lane for the knob for automation. You can set MIDI learn and assign this to your controller. And I can even still use parameter modulation and have these knobs follow, for example, an audio signal. So we can have our sub level automatically go up and down based on the level of another bass synth. That's just a bit of foreshadowing for the next tutorial. And yeah, well, as you can see, this is all awesome, but still some features missing. So one is 16 knobs per project. Renaming these knobs if you have to is kind of tough. You have to edit them through the JSFX itself by changing these values right here. So that's kind of awkward. Unless you always use the same macros, in which case that could be very cool. And finally, you can dock the mapping panel itself. And that's doable by opening this drop down menu on the top left and we can dock it. So that could be a cool way of using this as well. Maybe having it docked and always kind of controlling the same parameters. Hmm. Anyway, that's it for today. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you like the work I do, you can support me by becoming a member of this channel and you'll get one exclusive video per month and some other types of content, plus all the ones that we've done so far. You can also, as always, make one-time donations to the channel through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. And a huge thanks to Adam Presley for your contribution to my channel. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye.